the sperm has come a long way in its development from its birth in the seminiferous tubule through its short uh, stay in the straight tubules, traveling through the uh, reti testis or the mediastinum testis, and then making its way to the epididymis via the ductuli efferentes, uh, we now travel from the epididymis into a structure known as the ductus deferens, also called the vas deferens. And if you want to really be cool and act like a urologist, just call it a vas. This could very easily have been a piece of vas deferens um, to verify uh, the surgery, but most likely it isn't because there's a lot of of blood vessels around this. This was probably a nice little section through a spermatic cord because the majority of the vas deferens runs in the spermatic cord. The vas deferens is extremely um, uh, simple as well. Let's start with the epithelium. Look at these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful array of stereocilia like we saw in the uh, epididymis. The vas deferens also has a beautiful array of stereocilia, but the uh, epithelium appears to be a little bit stratified. Actually, it's usually described as pseudostratified, implying that all of these epithelial cells eventually will make contact with your theoretical basement membrane at the base of the epithelium. Notice there's a little bit of connective tissue uh, giving the vas uh, a rather uh, undulated or a slightly wavy appearance. And at times it may just look fairly perfectly round. You then have various layers of smooth muscle. You know if the muscle cells look spindly, you're talking about a circular muscle. If this is a cross section, you know if the nuclei look very round, and these are probably uh, longitudinal muscles. Furthermore, because this was taking, uh, section was taken from the spermatic cord, you have to remember that the spermatic cord is extremely rich in rather thick walled uh, veins. So even though you know that this and this and probably this are arteries, the veins inside the spermatic cord, otherwise known as the pampiniform plexus of veins, are also fairly thick-walled as well. So it's very easily that these thick-walled things that have rather open lumen could be veins, even though they look like arteries. But here's definitely an artery, and you know that this is definitely a nerve, and you know that this is definitely a nerve, and you know that if you see little fragments of smooth, uh, I'm sorry, strided muscle, which you may possibly have here within the uh, spermatic cord, and that's the cremaster muscle, which is uh, develops from the fascia of the uh, internal oblique. And probably these little uh, fibers here, these little nerve fibers are branches of the genitofemoral nerve. So here's an artery, here's a nerve, this may very well be small strided muscle fibers. This uh, definitely is an artery. I believe these probably are most likely veins of the pampiniform plexus. Here is uh, another little nerve. There's another little nerve. There's an outer longitudinal muscle layer. The, this middle layer looks uh, chiefly circular. I believe these to me look like they may be longitudinal again. And here is the connective tissue underlying the epithelium as opposed to the uh, smooth muscle tissue of the uh, inner layer. And they look quite a bit uh, uh, similar, don't they? So I would get a trichrome stain here and show that this is collagen and that this is not. Last but not least, you have a very, very nice array of uh, pseudostratified epithelium, the superficial layer of which has, the, has these nice stereocilia again, and I thank you very much.